Hello and welcome to worship for Sunday the 18th of October. This worship is coming to you once more from Emmanuel Church in Eastbourne and I'm Reverend Paul Tabraham, one of the team ministers along with Mourner and Andy at Emmanuel. Good to be with you this morning for worship. There'll be some who will be actually physically at Emmanuel um, on Greenfield Road worshipping in a service that Dave Walsh is leading. Uh, you'll be enjoying this hopefully in the comfort of your own home or elsewhere on your tablet or device. But all of our worship is offered in the same spirit and all of it is accepted uh, by God. So an opening prayer to begin. Uh, and this is a prayer that specifically relates to this being one world week this week ahead. One world week, a time in the Christian church when you think about all of creation, uh, all that unites us and binds us together. Uh, and of course, God's spirit, which binds us in together as one people, one humanity and one worship too. Creator God, for our world of beauty and plenty, we praise you. For the earth, for the seas, for the plants, for the animals, the skies, and for all the wonders of the universe, we praise you. We stand before you in awe and wonder at your generosity in all that you have created. May we worship you, Lord, this day in spirit and in truth as one people before you. Amen. A short prayer of confession. Redeemer God, have mercy upon us, we pray, as we think about our planet, one world, a planet in which overconsumption of the world's resources has had such a damaging effect. For our lack of responsibility in the devastation of your habitats, of your creatures, our thoughtlessness in filling the world with our rubbish and which desecrates your creation. We confess these things, Lord, about how we treat your world and your people. And we know that you will hear our words and you will heal our hearts by your blessed mercy and by your grace. These and all of our prayers, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. Our Bible passage for this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel and it's chapter 22, which Ed will share with us now. And this is a, a very well-known passage and this includes uh, what Jesus has to say about the business of paying tax. Thanks for reading to us. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 to 22. The question about paying taxes. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus was aware of their malice and said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, whose head is this and whose title? They answered, the emperor's. Then he said to them, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed and they left him and went away. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Ed, and thanks be to God for his word to us. Well, what a great reading that is this morning. Drama, tension, malice, and a bit of ill feeling all bubbling beneath the surface as well. It reminds me of a, of a biblical version of Prime Minister's Question Time. Or maybe you could say, better still, a classic interview by a Jeremy Paxman or a John Humphreys trying to back their victim into a corner from which there is no escape. 
Well, Jesus' question is here. They must be smacking their lips as they try and trick him into choosing a side. A real heads I win, tails you lose scenario if ever there was one. Is it Caesar or is it God? If Jesus says, tell you what, let's have an 11th commandment. Thou shalt pay your taxes. The Pharisees know full well that the common people won't stand for it. They would be appalled. Jesus' popularity would plummet. Of course, if Jesus says, on the, on the other hand, uh, come to think of it, my fellow Judeans, there's something in this. Let's stuff Caesar. Stop paying your taxes now then he would be accused of inciting revolution and the Romans would come down on him like a ton of bricks. I mean, ironically, some years after uh, Jesus' life, death and resurrection, this is exactly what happened. And in AD 66, there was a huge Jewish revolt. It went on for four years and then was heavily put down by the Romans. And at least some of that was down to disagreements about taxation and uh, the money that the Romans were seeking from the local Jewish population. Jesus, therefore, steers a wonderfully skillful middle course through these two extremes. He refuses to split the sacred on the one hand from the secular on the other. He refuses to be pulled into uh, saying that somehow Caesar's demands are greater than God's or to suggest that actually anarchy is the way forward instead. Sometimes when you have debates about politics or economics, um, the middle ground can sometimes seem to be a fudge uh, where nothing is fully uh, agreed. But actually, in this instance, uh, Jesus' response is anything but a fudge. I don't know about you, but since the lockdowns happened, I'm hardly using uh, physical money at all at the moment. Touching money, passing it on, it's not a very good idea, I suppose, at the moment for hygiene purposes. Uh, and no, I promise you I'm not doing yet another plug about standing orders and off a tree. I'm really not. But I pay for things by card these days and I'm not often taking coins out of my pocket at all. It's interesting that Jesus tells those who are present to take coins out of their pocket and look at the image on there. The image of Caesar, of course. This is... The genius of Jesus' words in telling them to take the coin out of their pocket and to look at the image on it, the image of Caesar, Jesus is beautifully limiting what is due to Caesar. It's only the money, it's only the denarius tax, and that's all that Caesar is due and getting. The most important verse in this whole encounter follows on right after, when Jesus says, give to God the things that are God's. Do you remember in Genesis in chapter one, when God is creating um, all humankind, God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. The entire person who is made in the image of God belongs to God. Jesus' words point to a reality that our worship and our obedience and our love of God actually outweighs all other demands upon us because God has a claim of love upon us that outweighs and transcends anything else. All Caesar gets is just the image on the coin, the coin that is his due. This short political economic discussion and debate that goes on it actually reminds and reinforces for you and I today that actually, yes, we can and we should pay our taxes, our national insurance contributions, VAT and all the rest of it. It's a part of our obligation and our contribution to the society in which we live. Thinking about local taxation, it did cross my mind whether or not to ask Dominic Cummings to come on uh, to worship today and to record a short piece for us, but I think I thought better of it in the end. And yes, I think we can say as Christians that taxes should be fair. They should be proportionate. Those who have little or nothing, what they pay should be uh, reflected accordingly in terms of what they have. Those who have more or plenty should pay more. 
I'm not trying to make a, a politically loaded statement in that. It just strikes me as being uh, common sense and common justice too. And also, because as Jesus reminds us that actually our higher calling is to live as God's children, we retain the right, therefore, to then protest or to disagree uh, with the state or to fight for change when actually economic systems perpetuate either injustice or poverty. Now, in 2004, the World Council of Reformed Churches met uh, in Ghana and they made a very powerful statement about the economy uh, that became known as the Accra Confession, the Accra Confession. And it goes, we believe the economy exists to serve the dignity and the well-being of people in community within the bounds of the sustainability of creation. We believe the economy exists to serve the dignity and well-being of people in community within the bounds of the sustainability of creation. What a great statement there about the economy serving dignity and well-being rather than issues perhaps to do with either greed or injustice or inequality. So in the days that you and I are living in at the moment with all of our trials and troubles, maybe we should try to avoid being pulled into extremes of either political or economic view that actually do us no favours at all, that tend to bypass reason uh, or reasonable positions, that tend to bypass fairness in favour of sound bites or dogmatics. It is possible for you and I to have a balanced and a reasonable response to the needs of the world around us. And our response can be rooted most firmly of all in the love and the foundation of God and in the love of neighbour too. We can negotiate our way through the times that we are living in. And to my mind, there's no better way of doing this than if we remember that we are made in God's image. We belong to God and that our brothers and sisters across the world belong to God too. So we come to our prayers of intercession, uh, which basically means prayers for all God's people in the world. And at the beginning of One World Week, these prayers come from uh, the One World Week resources uh, on their website. So let us pray. Thank you, God, our Heavenly Father, for all of the wonders of the world which you have created for us to inhabit. For all the people in the world around us and particularly the Lord, those who guide us, love us and help us in this time of need. For people who lead us, who work in healthcare, everyone who shares their gifts and talents to help us come together to make your world a better place. We remember you, Lord Jesus Christ, your words and actions that inspire us to love God and our neighbour. We pray that you will remain with us always, encouraging us to care and love the world around us. Remind us to persevere in carrying out good works and call us to be people of welcome, offering your hospitality to all people everywhere in the different situations in which we find ourselves. Help us to come together to make your world a better place. Holy Spirit of hope, we ask for your gifts of courage and knowledge to deepen our understanding of the needs of others. For fortitude to endure the difficulties of our current situation and for awe and for wonder that we might see a future beyond our reach. We pray for wisdom and humility to recognise ourselves as participants in your loving and creative vision. Help us come together to make your world a better place. These and all of our prayers we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Saviour. 
Amen. We pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Or rather suitably for one world week, all of the daily devotions that will be on the church website in this coming week ahead, uh, they are all going to be themed around one world. So you'll see some devotions from Howard and Gillian, Matthew, uh, myself, Roger, all to do with one world, giving us a different sense about creation or humanity and the love that God calls us to share one with another. I'm going to say a short prayer of, de of dedication for all of the gifts that we give to God. Uh, many will give their, their gifts to church or to charity or tax uh, and other means to make this world a better and a fairer place. I'm going to dedicate all these gifts uh, in a word of prayer. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless all of the gifts that we give to the benefit of our society, whether they be through taxation or whether they be through free will offering to charity or to church. Loving Heavenly Father, bless all of our gifts and may our material wealth and resources be used for the betterment of those in need in our communities. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So this day, may the peace and the blessing of God dwell with us always. The blessing of God, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us this day and forevermore. Amen.